Dave Burkett here, along with Carlos Menares. The Lions are coming off a, uh, a victory, Carlos, as Carlos walks in from around the camera. One day I'm going to shoot a video while we're doing this so you see exactly the, uh, the setup here. But big victory for the Lions today. They snap a three-game losing streak, beat the New York Giants 31-26. And, uh, Carlos, I think we saw some good things from the Lions today. Um, the defense got going a little bit, got a little pass rush from Trey Flowers, something that you know they, they, they really lacked the first six games. Um, Secondary didn't play great, but given the, the state of the secondary with the injuries, Tracy Walker got hurt, no Quandary Diggs, no Darius Slay. Um, I thought it was a good game overall for them. And then, look, Matthew Stafford and Kenny Galladay uh, becoming a really nice passing duo in the NFL. Galladay with two more touchdowns today, Stafford 330 or so yards. Um, just a good win for the Lions. I think a, 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 a day that they needed to get a victory, and they came out and they, they you know took care of business. Yeah, this was definitely what they needed. You know, a, a somewhat convincing win. A bad team, a bad Giants team. Yep. Um, only two wins so far in the season. So, um, but they did what they needed to do. Like you said, you know, on all sides of the ball, they they did a really good job. Um, so, you know, it's good. It's good. They, it's good that they they finally take a step forward. They can move beyond the losing. Um, you know, they they have a not super hard you know schedule ahead of them. Um, they can take advantage of that. But it was encouraging. A lot of encouraging signs. Um, and uh, more injuries possibly, you know, on the way. So we'll see how they deal with those. But trade deadline's coming yeah. up. Lots of interesting possibilities. Are they buyers or sellers, We Dave? will talk about that here in a second. And you asked me, so let's talk about it yeah. now. All right, they're, they're buyers, I think. All right. Um, the asking price for players out there right now is pretty steep. And maybe that comes down as we close in on Tuesday. I, I don't know that there will be any... You know, huge additions to be had, right? There's not going to be a Khalil Mack that gets traded at the deadline, I don't think. Jalen Ramsey, that, that type of player I don't think is out there. Um, would the Lions go after a player like that? Maybe. I mean, you know, I think they've, they've shown a willingness to, to deal a first-round pick in the past. Um, you know, but I, I think ultimately it's probably a, a little patchwork move that they, that they might have in them. Maybe it's a running back. I know I put out on Twitter, Rashad Penny would be the guy that fits to me the, the type of player that you know they're they're most likely to add at the deadline a type of player with some years on his contract at a position the running back position where they're really shorthanded now with Carryon Johnson out. So I don't know that a deal is going to happen, but I feel pretty confident in saying that the next 48 hours are going to be out there, you know, turning over rocks looking to see if they can make a deal. You know, um, so what position do you think that running back would be the big one? The I think. One. I mean, look, that you know the defensive line hasn't played up to, to snuff yet. You know they they certainly could use some pass rush help. I just don't you know they don't value that that rush type end like some teams do unless right. it's that Khalil Mack. Right. Um, you know, they're, they're fine at receiver, they're fine at tight end. You know, they're not going to make any changes to their offensive line. You know, the secondary, now given Tracy Walker's injury, maybe that is a position where they, even though they just dealt Quandre Diggs, and who knows, uh, you know, how long Darius slays out or what, what happens there, but I think running back would be the most likely position that they make a move at. Secondary would be number two. Unless the price tag's too high to get Quadri Diggs back. Um, yeah. And you look at running back. We'll give you a four. Bring him back. <laughs> give you a four. About a six. Um, yeah, so who do you think? And running back, do you think Melvin Gordon's in play? Kenyon Drake? I mean, All right. they need to move these guys. You know, Rashawn Penny. I mean, they, they need yeah. to move some of these guys. All right, so uh, make sure you check Freak.com tomorrow. I'm going to write a little bit more about this. My, my Monday <laughs> column that I always uh, write. But... Um, Look, Melvin Gordon, last year of his contract, if you want to sign him beyond this year, it's going to cost you a lot of money. I mean, it's going to cost you $10 million a year or something. Now, he's maybe he's played his value down a little bit this year with the holdout. Um, and it's also going to cost you a lot of draft pick compensation. I mean, the, the Chargers are in line to get a third-round compensatory pick, so presumably you're going to have to give up that or more to get Melvin Gordon, plus give him a big contract. I say the Lions, look, you don't have to give him a contract, but from the Lions' standpoint... Uh, you know, this is a team that they only have seven draft choices next year, no seventh rounder, even though they added the extra six in the Diggs trade. Um, you know, and, and they know internally that they still are more than a handful of pieces away from being that, you know, Super Bowl contending team. So I think they want to, if they're going to make a move, I think they'd like it to be for someone who can help them, not just the final, you know, nine games this year, but in 2020 and, and maybe beyond as well. And that's why I say Rashad Penny, two years left on his deal. You remember a couple of years ago uh, in the draft, Jay Glazer at least reported last year it was that, you know, the Lions tried to trade for Penny after the Seahawks drafted him. Seattle, of course, said no. You know, the thing is, like, okay, philosophically, we talked a little bit about this before, is are you making a trade? What's most important, to look for value in the trade 
going forward, total package, or finding a player that, like Gordon, who will help you now, because the future isn't promised to anybody here. Sure. I think the Lions, I think Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia would, would say that. Even Matt Patricia even kind of sort of made a joke the other day of like, I hope I'm here, you know, after the trade deadline. So you, you want to, yes, you want to get the maximum value, and but would you rather have, you know, a better player right now? You're three, three, and one. You have a well, chance. They're, you're not, the, the Packers and Vikings aren't too far ahead of you. Yeah. You can, they're still within striking distance. Do you want to play for now or do you want to be playing? For the future. All right. See, that's the thing. I, I think it's a it's a sliding scale, right? Like if right the now, Lions and Vikings and Packers were all neck and neck, maybe you're more apt to make that sort of move. But they're not neck and neck. I mean, the right. Packers are. Who knows what happens in the game tonight? But they could be seven and one, right? I mean, that's that's a huge gap that you have to make up going forward. The Vikings are six and two. It's the same thing. You're you're looking at a big hill to climb. So. I don't think you give up on the now, and I don't think you'd be doing that by getting a Rashad Penny. I think a player like that, a Kenyon Drake, I think they can still help you in the moment. But you know, if it let's just say it takes a two to get Melvin Gordon, all right, um, I, that's a lot to give up to maybe not make the playoffs, to then not have him under control for next year, and to then have to, if you do want him, uh, you know, under control, to sign him to a, you know, a, a four-year, forty million dollar contract or, or somewhere in that neighborhood. Right. You know, maybe even more than that. And I just. I don't think the Lions want to pay a running back that type of money. I don't know that Melvin Gordon, from what we've seen from him this year, he's a really good player, been a good player in the past, but yeah. he has not been a good player this year, um, maybe due to the holdout, you know, lingering injuries, whatever it is. So, you know, I don't think we're talking about a, a Khalil Mack type by getting Melvin Gordon. If it, was a, if it was Khalil Mack out there, yeah, you go out and you make that move. If it was Jalen Ramsey... You know what? As you know, I said I was on I, as I was on record as saying the Lions should have gone to get him. You make that move, but I don't. I don't know that that pl- type of player is available now. As you, know, as we all know, the Lions like outspoken cornerbacks, so yeah, that, exactly. that would have worked really fit, well. It was going to fit well. So you, so you get Melvin Gordon for a two. You're not able to draft a line a Hawaii linebacker next year, <laughs> and you get and you, you get, get take No, you can't get him either. Right? Ooh, yeah. I think he's off the market. So and that and and, and but they're expecting Carry On Johnson to be back, right? They would like Carry On Johnson to be back. So Gordon is your stopgap. He helps. Get yeah, you maybe yeah. closer to that wild card or possibly division out of a closer to the wild card probably at this point realistically you're playing for now it, it looks aggressive it looks the, the fan base gets you know a little bit energized maybe we saw today that there weren't a ton of fans here i think you know it was a little i always judge it by how easy it is to get in the stadium it was kind of easy to get into the stadium today the rain probably helped a little bit yep. too on top of that but um this is the kind of thing where you need some momentum you need something to push you forward um, and I think, especially last year, I think the Golden Tate thing was kind of a gut punch. So um, I'd like to see them be aggressive and go after somebody. And uh, maybe Gordon's not quite the player he was before. But um, I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with Drake or, or, or Penny. But uh, I'd like to see an emphatic move right now that can help you now. Um, and I think, but I think, I think Bob Quinn thinks like you, unfortunately, um, is like this whole package and this what's well, going to help us down the road and this and that. See, I... I Maybe There's GMs think things differently. Like right, yeah. A GM, you have to take the big picture into account. You can't just play for the next nine games, right? You have to take the big picture into account. The coach, the coaching staff, those are always the guys who, let, let's go for it. I'm a coach's guy. Yeah, You're let's, a GM's guy. That's the problem. That. But, I, you know, I, I, I don't – I think if you had Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn in an honest moment of where the roster is now, where it needs to be for them to be a perennial contender – um, I think they would tell you that they need that second round pick. That that pick is more valuable to their their long term success, the long term yeah. success of that program, um, and what that player may be for them than it would be to have Melvin Gordon and whatever boost they may get over nine games. I was so, for a pencil, sorry. Yeah, there you go, coach's guy. Um, so I, you know, so that's why to me I would rather give up a lesser draft pick, get a running back that's going to help you now. He's not Melvin Gordon, but he may help you in the future as well. Yeah, and it's it's all it all depends on their evaluation, right? If it's the kind of the right kind of player, sure, right? Absolutely. If they're gonna fit the the culture yeah. and all this other stuff, we don't quite know. I haven't done enough digging yeah. on all these different players on who fits the the Patriot Way culture and all that stuff. But I thought if it, I think if it does, I I just like the idea of, you know, not it's not a it's not a Ricky Williams throw everything out the window every draft pick you can have. You know, it's like it's one it's a it's a second round draft pick, and a third round draft. You pick, did you hit know. the nail on the head about look, it, it's about the fit too because that was a big part of the yeah. Quandre trade, right? And again, I've I've said this, it's not that Quandre is a bad guy. Nobody would say that, but you don't have to be a good guy or a bad guy or whatever to be a Matt Patricia type guy, right? And I think that's 
Matt is still in the process of getting the locker room exactly the way that he wants it. And so that, you know, that's part of why, that's part of the reason that went into making Quandre Diggs expendable. And, you know, now they have this extra draft pick to play with. And, you know, who knows? There Obviously the report today from Adam Schefter about Darius Slay being, um, I wouldn't say he was on the trade block. I think the report just said, you know, teams have called. I've confirmed that teams have called on, on Darius Slay. No surprise there. Um, and that, you know, the Lions, yeah, I guess the report indicated that they would be listening. And, you know, it would take a lot to get him. And I still, I don't see Darius Slay being traded right now. I mean, I know obviously what he said last week probably didn't go, you know, go over well within the walls of Allen Park. But uh, look, he's still a player that can win now. You know, it, yeah. when we talk about winning now, right? He's yeah. a player that can help them win now. And I think the one thing that you saw today out of the secondary, uh, Rashawn Melvin didn't have a great game. Justin Coleman didn't have a great game. They still need some, they still need some help in the secondary. And that's before we know what's going on with Tracy Walker's knee. So to give up Darius Slay without having a replacement in-house, without having another move, um, that could be tricky. That's the one thing where I, I totally agree. It would, it would be another gut, kind of a gut punch if they got rid of Slay. Yeah. But you could understand it because if they're looking at it as a culture problem, you know, and that he could be influencing younger players, he could be causing problems, you know, I don't I don't see that from Slay. I don't Slay. think they do. I don't think they But if think they did, they're... you could kind of if if they traded Slay, that would be the obvious reason yeah. why they thought like, listen, you know, he's he's been crowing about the contract extension and all the stuff, so there have been issues. There have been enough issues um, with Slay that would make sense. And if they get a if they get a really good deal on him, you know, yeah. you, you, it, it might be hard to pass up. Well is he here? You predict, what do you think? I think he's here through the rest of the season. I okay. think they trade him in the off season. You know, he wants more money. I just don't know that the Lions are going to pay him for the reasons that you just mentioned. I think you can get a high draft pick for him then, and then you have replacements out there that you can go get beat in the draft free agency or whatever. So I think, you know, we're down to our last nine games or whatever of Darius Slay as a Lion. But I think he's here to help this team the rest of the season. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. I think that's the, the – unless they get two ones, then. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> for sure. Um, but, look, I, I – as we were talking about this game earlier, just to kind of wrap things up, I mean, I, I think we do. I don't know that you can take a lot from this game other than in the moment, yeah. big win for them, right? Because it was the Giants, like you said. And coming up next, you got the Raiders, you got the Bears, two road games that are both very winnable and very losable. And to me, this is kind of maybe where the season hinges, right? The Lions need to probably still win seven games, seven more games if they're going to make the playoffs this year. And with the Packers and the Vikings and the Cowboys still on the schedule, I don't know that you can afford to lose either of these two road games. So, um, at, you know, we'll see. Big week coming up for the Lions when, again, they might be shorthanded in the secondary. Yeah, this this is going to be the test. I mean, and it, it's always it's always it seems like every week is a, is a test for the Lions. Um, but they passed this week. You know, they did they they did what they needed to do. Um, and I think I think these games are winnable, though. I think the I think the Raiders and the Bears yeah. and even the Cowboys. I think they're I think they're winnable. You know, it's not none of these. Cowboys teams, can be a tough one. The, the next yeah. two, I, I think they can get them, but they're but on the road, it's tricky. It, it is, and you know, I think I don't know where the Cowboys' offensive line is. I know it's been banged up back, but um, as they showed with with the Giants, and yeah. you know, you know, uh, Daniel Jones is not Dak Prescott, but I think if you stop Ezekiel Elliott, you know, you have a chance if you do something to contain him. Kind of how they contain Saquon, just somewhat. You know, they had a chance. Right. So make them one dimensional. Um, you know, uh, Coach Kellen Jones, Kellen Moore is going to have a surprise for them, I'm sure, in store. But um, yeah, that, I think that I think these games are not they're not crazy. They're not yeah. against 80, 85 Bears. You know, so I think we're going to they have a chance. They have a chance to do something. You know, and this is the kind of thing that that can springboard them. I think. So I think everybody's feeling good. If the injuries aren't too severe, you get Slay back. A few little things break the right way. You know, we could be on the on. You could be on the on the road to the Super Bowl this year for uh, I'll probably, probably be there. We'll see. Um, but big win for the Lions today against the New York Giants. Just an important win for the Lions today against the New York Giants. Big couple days ahead. We'll find out what the Lions have up their sleeve, if anything, before the NFL trade deadline, 4 p.m. Tuesday. Until then, for Carlos Menares, I'm Dave Burkett.